In this video, I'm investigating a failure in the power supply section of the Philips DVP630 DVD player. The device worked without any problems for many years, but one day it didn't want to turn on anymore. The player is now plugged to the mains power, but you can see that the standby LED is off. In addition, there's no sound coming from the disk drive inside and the main display is also off, which is a good reason to suspect that there's a failure in the power supply section of the player. A few words about this DVD player. The main features that were compelling to me at the time when I bought it were the support for various video and audio compression formats and playback media, the variety of connectivity options and the possibility for converting it to a multi-region player. In addition, something that's also very important is the look, the build quality and the price and this unit with its nice and elegant design and the relatively good price was definitely a better choice than many other players available on the market at that time. Ok, now it's time to unplug the cord, open the unit and investigate the problem further. The heart of this player is the ES6698F circuit from ESS Technologies. This is a highly integrated single chip DVD processor which performs all front end and back end functions. Now let's focus on the power supply. There are no bulging capacitors in the output section, however the fuse at the mains input appears to be blown, so we'll start by testing it to confirm if that's true. But before I do that, I'll first release the mains cable. Now let's do the continuity test of the fuse. The fuse is obviously blown and needs to be replaced. We also have to continue testing further to find out if there are other failed components that caused the fuse to blow. For easier testing, we'll now remove the board from the unit. When doing repairs on these high voltage circuits, always make sure to check if the storage capacitor is still charged and discharge it with a resistor before going further. To remove the board we have to disconnect the mains cable and the connectors, remove the screws and then the board can be removed for working on it. A few words about the power supply. This is a typical switching power supply, which provides multiple DC output voltages. At the primary side, the mains comes to this connector, marked with AC in on the board. There is a varistor for over voltage protection, then there is a fuse, and these here are the components of the input EMI transient filter. After the input filter, the mains voltage is rectified with the diodes D301 to D304, and then there is a smoothing capacitor, which at the first glance appears to be normal. Here we see the transformer. This is the optocoupler for the feedback from the secondary to the primary side. And this is the main integrated circuit from Fairchild Semiconductors, which consists of a high voltage power MOSFET transistor switch and a current mode PWM controller. At the output there are several rectifying diodes, smoothing capacitors, inductors and the components for the feedback. The power supply provides 5 volts, 12 volts, minus 12 volts and minus 24 volts DC voltages, but there is also an AC voltage coming out from the CN303 connector. Since the fuse is blown and there are no other visual clues, the first suspects for testing at the input in this case would be the diodes of the diode bridge and we are going to start with the fault finding there. 
If we carefully trace the input, we will come to these two points, which are the two points of the bridge rectifier, where the AC is connected, and these two other points are the DC output of the bridge. Now let's test the diodes. Two of the diodes are obviously shorted, but to verify that, I'll now remove one end of each of these diodes and repeat the test. The second test confirmed that the two diodes D301 and D302 are shorted. Although the other two diodes passed the test, for reliability reasons I'm going to remove them as well and replace all four. Let's repeat what we found so far. What we see now is a simplified schematic representing the diode bridge rectifier and the storage capacitor at the output of the diode bridge. The two shorted diodes, D301 and D302, have created a short across the AC source, as a result of which the input fuse had blown. Now let's solder the new diodes. A visual inspection of the soldering joints is always a good practice. I also test the new diodes now, when they are soldered onto the board to confirm that nothing happened during the soldering and then I'll replace the fuse. One more visual inspection and then it's time to return the power supply into the device. The board was successfully returned and now we are going to test the player in operation. Of course we cannot say that the repair has been 
completed if we do not measure the voltages while the unit is in operation. And that's what it follows now. The voltage on the plus 12 volts rail was obviously more than 10% below the nominal value, but that didn't seem to affect the operation of the unit in any way, and for now I'll leave it as it is. The other voltages were in their expected ranges. Still, I didn't want to close the unit before I do at least a check of the plus 12 volts rail with an oscilloscope. So in the next minute you can see the voltage on this rail during the various modes of the player operation and compare it with the voltage on the plus 5 volts rail. Ok, now I'm going to close the unit and do one more test after that. I hope that you find this repair interesting and that perhaps you learned something new from this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.